The book Mao's Great Famine was translated and published in Chinese this fall. The book gives a shocking account of the Chinese Communist Party's role in what they claim were, quote, three years of natural disasters. Our reporter in Hong Kong spoke with the author. China's Great Famine of 1958 to 1961 is officially referred to by the communist regime as three years of natural disaster. Yet researchers generally believe the famine was caused by policies associated with the so-called Great Leap Forward, whereby peasants were ordered to stop working in the fields and join in steel production. Dutch scholar Frank de Cotta, author of Mao's Great Famine, goes a step further. It's more like a tattoo shop. It's more a mass murder. There was food, but all the food was in the hands of the party. Food was used as a weapon. Dikota's book was recently published in Chinese. It challenges the Chinese regime's explanation for what happened during that period. Dikota's estimate of 45 million deaths also goes beyond Western estimates of 30 million. Um, it's not just the number of people, it's the manner of death and the horror of that period that really, really matters. During the famine, officials made certain decisions under pressure to show results to their superiors. These decisions led to millions of deaths. For example, even when people were starving, authorities kept the granaries of Henan and Hebei locked up. And this is generally what happens when you have crimes against humanity. You can blame one man at the top, or you can blame the system, but the reality is that many people at all sorts of levels did things which they knew very well were wrong at the time. So it's extraordinarily complex. The Economist selected the English version of Dakota's book as one of the books of the year in 2010. Dakota earned his PhD at the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London. He later became professor of modern Chinese history at that school before moving to become chair professor of humanities at the University of Hong Kong. And in China's Henan province, private healthcare clinics have been spreading hepatitis C by reusing dirty needles. Many of those now infected are children. This isn't the first time doctors in Henan have been making people sicker, as in the 1990s, HIV spread rapidly through the region because of tainted blood transfusions. The transfusions were part of corrupt blood plasma buying schemes. As China's population explodes, demand for healthcare increases, and the Chinese regime has not been able to keep up. Good day, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. My website is ggnonline.com. I recommend checking it out. Um, it's ggnonline.com. There's a poll up there you can check out. Also on uh, YouTube, ddarko2012. That's ddarko2012. Also on Facebook, you can check out the GGN group, Facebook group, uh, 129, 30 members so far. Um, all the links for these stories for today, including the GGN uh, news group, will be in YouTube's video description, so please check that out. Okay, so we just uh, saw Miles' great famine was a result of the Great Leap Forward, right? Now, this is something that we heard in the news recently. Eurozone crisis, European Union prepares for the Great Leap Forward, so they're going to be heading for a Great Leap Forward as well. And uh, HIV tests, and you know, you can kind of tell, right? Because um, I covered that one video in Portugal where the people, where one of the activists actually said, This is gonna starve people, this is gonna kill people. And they passed it, they passed that measure, the austerity measures in Portugal, and the people are riled up in their protest. So, as China infected a bunch of people uh, with AIDS, HIV, um, back in the 90s uh, because what? Oh, it was part of a program for the poor people to give blood to increase their income, subsidize their income. You like that? Um, and, and also in the United States where a bunch of veterans um, uh, received uh, HIV from the VA clinic, the Veterans Affairs Clinic. So that was nice of them. HIV tests for all proposed. So UK experts, the again, the experts always calling for it, right? Calling for universal HIV testing and a bid to reduce infections, the BBC News uh, has reported on. And as AIDS Day goes on, China's AIDS petitioners ignored on World's A Day, talking to pe 
talking about talking about the people sorry that uh, contracted aids during the 90s moving on here got some interesting articles here as far as eugenics goes babies sleep better following afternoon vaccines almost like babies sleep better after you know um, breastfeeding right in the afternoon uh, babies sleep better following afternoon vaccines Ooh, good idea uh, it says two-month-old babies who receive immunizations in the afternoon sleep better afterward than children who have had their uh, dose of eugenics in the morning, according to a new study. And you know what? It's funny because they actually, some of them don't wake up and they die. There are some people that think that vaccines and sudden infant death syndrome uh, has a link. So it's, it, I mean, it's just insane when I saw this headline, but they do have the audacity to put it out there. And it's coming from writers, uh, which is what Rothschild owned or something like that. But either way, they're a big pharma company that pushes all those vaccines and Merck and all that stuff. So not that surprising, but it still shocks me to see headlines like that because uh, people can't read between the lines. So there you go. Uh, and this is a recent article. Well, it's not a recent article. It's from June 7, 2011. But this case has been made so many times. The Amish don't get autism and they don't get vaccinations. Possible link. Well, they're going to go in there and tell you uh, no, that there is not a link interesting point i just remembered i wanted to uh cover which was what um i'm not sure if how many of you have seen the x-files episode um where they had the the basically um they were talking about growth hormones in the meat i don't remember i don't know what episode it was but there was an episode where they were um where people were getting experimented on and it got turned into this crazy alien story but the gist of it was was that they used this group um, in this rural area, it was like cattle country, and uh, they were all vegetarians, and they wore these weird uh, turbans and stuff like that. And maybe as you're recalling the episode now, but either way, what was the gist of it? Was that those crazy people were what? These traditional people were what? They were a control group. And I'm wondering if the Amish are, I always wonder, why are the Amish left alone by the federal government? Why are they left alone? They do pay taxes. So, I mean, they, I did real, I did learn that recently when someone said they didn't pay taxes. They do actually pay taxes and stuff like that. But for the most part, they're left alone. I wonder why. And maybe that's why. Maybe because they are a control group for everybody else that's getting all these eugenics. Um, they get to go back to the Amish and say, well, you know, if we were to look at all the population of all these uh, 300 million people, 300 million slaves, we'd have a, a lot better of a, um, of, a, uh, of a time trying to track these people down who haven't done all this stuff. And the Amish are the ones that usually uh, don't, uh, don't just go on board with all the eugenics, the vaccination stuff, but unfortunately they're, uh, they're susceptible to the chemtrails. If you look in that movie, The Witness, there's actually chemtrails in there and they're just being saturated. So, and that was in the eighties. Brain fine sheds light on autism. Cells taken from people with a rare syndrome linked to autism could help explain the origins of the conditions, scientists say, and they're not going to tell you jack squat as far as the truth grows. This is an interesting, uh, dolphins in danger when they interact with humans. Now, this is the thing, okay? I just want to put this out here. Go in there and check this out. This is a radio show, Miss Muggsy, whatever show, with Stuart Swerdlow. Now, this woman, um, she does a good job with the interview and stuff like that, but at the same time, to me personally, her voice is can be kind of monotonous and annoying, but at the same time, Stuart Swerdlow has some very good information, and him and his wife are on there from Expansions.com. I'm not trying to promote them, but I'm just trying to uh, put this out here, and this is what they said. They said that autism and these vaccines, the vaccines are there to bring those who have this, I guess they call it the dolphin energy um the dolphin energy, they're actually very high, they're very psychic people, and they want to locate, they want to target who these people are, and the vaccines draw that out of them, and then what happens? These people that are highly telepathic and stuff like that, they can't speak to other people. You know what I'm saying? I know there's degrees of it, but the ones that are hardcore, probably very psychic, are very aware of what's going on, and uh, they can't communicate with the with the rest of the world. So that is like, so they they're able to identify them, then they're able to shut them down from communicating, and uh, and this is interesting because then Janice Wordle said, "What dolphins in danger when they interact with humans? Well, why human dolphin interactions are governed by a set of laws and guidelines which you need to be aware of." And why? And look at this: tougher laws to protect friendly dolphins. Well, I know there's that there's mean and there's not so friendly dolphins. But my point is, before I uh, finish up on this uh, subject, 
is is what? Well, you don't have to believe me or anything, but if there was an Atlantean society that existed, let's say in the Central Americas, right? And it's underwater right now. And at one time, they did have a civilization with technology and earthquake weapons and stuff like that. Let's go on a limb and say that they're experimenting with humans and animal hybrids, like the Yeti, like the mermaid, like this, the dolphins energy. Uh, and so I just think that this is a very interesting concept that they propose. Um, it says here, feds, oh, oh, my point, but finishing up there, those people with those genes, those genetics, all the way going back to uh, Atlantis, those are the genes when they have autism and they draw it out. Those are the ones that have uh, high ratios of Atlantean genes from experimentation with uh, genetics. So feds to test anthrax shots on kids. So, you know. Here we go. More experimentation. U.S. panel backs anthrax experiments on children. Another experiment was this back in the 50s when they chose to put bisphenol A into all, most of the plastics. Um, so this here study finds connection between prenatal exposure to BPA and aggression during toddler years, those plastic bottles that they suck on. And then, um, of course, they, what, they feminize. It says here, a therapist brainwashed woman into believing she was a satanic uh, cult. And I try to stay away from those psychiatrists. I've never been to one. I try to recommend people to not go to them. They're basically there. They're, they're people, they're like, uh, they're like family members, as, as if, if society was the way it, it could be and should be, you wouldn't need psychiatrists, but they fill in for that. Um, and says here, psychiatrist called, that's just my opinion, it doesn't mean it's true. Psychiatrist calls for lithium to be added to the water. That's right. And guess who uh, helps promote this? John Holdren, Obama's science czar. The population at large could be sterilized by infertility drugs intentionally put into the nation's drinking water or in their food. White House aide, another aide, Obama should concentrate on transgender issues in whatever time we have left, he's quoted as saying. Poland's first transsexual and gay um, MPs take seats in parliament. Then we have Senate approves bill that legalizes sodomy and bestiality in the U.S. military. That's right. Next up, we have labor backs same-sex marriage. That's in Australia. Look at this. Man's shock when prostitute turns out to be his own daughter. That's right. And uh, she was, let's see here, it says, uh, and decided to employ a sex worker as uh, having mar marital difficulties, but collapsed in shock when his daughter, 20, turned up. She fled after uh, he collapsed and is reportedly no longer working in the sex industry, but is planning to go back to school. And being in the Marine Corps, you can bet that I've been in plenty of strip clubs. I don't go to them anymore. I, don't, I can't stand them, to be honest with you. But uh, all those girls would say the same damn thing. Oh, I'm just saving up money to go to college. <laughs> Obama campaign abandons white working class voters in favor of minorities and the educated. Just as planned, Chavez uh, price caps spark panic buying of coffee and toilet paper. But look at this. Venezuela hosts regional summit excluding U.S. Well, why? Venezuela reduces poverty rate, and one in three Americans are near or in poverty. So there you go. Foster kids are overly medicated. But what else has, happens in foster homes? In Maryland, in 92 study found that substantiated allegations of sexual abuse in foster care are four times higher than that found among the general population. Another stat is in 87, they found that 25% of children in the Missouri sample group have been victims of uh, abuse or inappropriate punishment. Moving on, 18 crazy facts which show that no nation on earth is more doped up on prescription drugs than America is. Go check that out. Link will be posted. YouTube's video description, U.S. jobless rate drops to and a half year lows, so don't pop the champagne just yet. Half of unemployment rate decline due to people giving up job search. So they're just giving up. Remember what I said? It says here, uh, employment growth picked up in speed. Talking about 8% unemployment, lies, damn lies. And talking about the statistics, saying that the real unemployment is above 15% and around 22% post. The Pope, or the leader of the global government, seeks to end the death penalty. So when he speaks like the uh, 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 central World Central Bank or a tax or whatnot, or except in aliens. Oregon governor bans death penalty for the rest of the term, so everybody follows suit. Uh, Pope accused of breaking the seatbelt law in Pope Mobile. Well, I don't think he's going to really have a problem. He's the leader of the global government. Farmers worry new labor rules will end teen jobs. 
but he's not just the uh, the leader of the global government. He's the leader of the world New World Order religion. So uh, moving on here, we have 70% of the world's raw chocolate soon to be genetically modified and flesh-eating bananas fears hit Mozart. So they're saying that it's a rumor and a hoax, but they say it's strongly advised against burning the skin around the supposed infection. Next up, we have industrial monoculture leading to the extinction of bananas. So as countries are banning the, the climate uh, change BS, the White House put this up. You can't believe everything that you read talking about rolling blackouts in Texas were caused by the Obama administration's policies. But look at this. Texas could face rolling blackouts next year. This is GGN. Thank you.